what is the biggest mistake you see young screenwriters make? Um, I don't know if this is a, a, a quantitative, like if this is a, like a, a literal mistake, I can say, I, I, I think the, the problem that I find with a lot of young screenwriters is they think they're great writers their first script right right away yeah and and any and in any you know just if you think logically no matter what if you're no matter what you're if you're an artist whether you're a painter a writer a singer you get better with practice and the more you do it and if you're a craftsman if you make stuff out of wood you get better like the first thing that you carve out of wood isn't going to be the best thing that's ever been carved out of wood before so I think the biggest mistake that I see with a lot of young writers is they kind of come out with this attitude like, I understand that you have to believe in yourself because trust me, this business is like, you get rejected you know, a thousand times and then you get one person saying yes. So you have to keep your ego, you know, you have to keep your spirits up and your ego right size. But I just see a lot of young writers where they're like, this is the best script you know, I've ever written and you gotta read it. And then if you read it and you start giving them notes, they start arguing with you. And, you know, not that I think that my notes are the end all be all, but it's like there's an unwillingness to recognize that they're young. Like, trust me, my first couple of scripts, I went back and read them. I'm like, wow, these are, you know, years later, I'm like, these are crap. You know, these were awful. I can't believe I thought these were great. Um, but you have, I think the biggest mistake young writers make is they don't understand that, you know, it takes, you've got to keep doing it to get better. And, you know, every script that I write hopefully is better than the last script that I wrote because I've learned something in between. So I think being open to that process and realizing it takes time. Like there's a lot of um, people that think there's some easy shortcut, like, and I'm sure you've heard this too. Every time, you know, I speak at a, you know, any place, whether it's a high school or a college or a horror convention or a screenwriting convention, the two questions that people ask me are, how do I get my script to a stu studio head? And how do I get financing? How do I get an agent? Yeah. And how do, you know, and it's like, there aren't any people think that there are like it, it it literally like i heard there was a 10-year rule somebody and i can't remember who it was i wish i could somebody very smart and famous at the time had said you have to be if you're an artist you have to be willing to dedicate 10 years of your life to struggling before you finally succeed and they said and when we say succeed we don't mean that you're going to all of a sudden be rich and you know have all the money in the world we mean to get something done and you know i thought that rule was bull when I went to you know New York as I was 19 I got an agent I was interning at New Line I was like screw that 10 year rule it was 10 years to the to the year I graduated high school that I sold Final Destination so it took all that time of me writing scripts getting them rejected almost getting jobs not getting them it took 10 years to actually get my first project like produced and made from when I graduated so people have that's you know I think that's a rule that people need to keep in the back of their head because there's so much clutter in the business where you have people who are like, all right, I'm going to try this acting thing for two years because my dad has a lot of money and I'm pretty and, or handsome. And if I don't make it, I'm going to quit. So you you have like people who are dedicating their lives to this. Plus, you have all this clutter of hundreds of people coming to Hollywood every day, you know, with with rich families. And, you know, they were good look, the best looking person at their school. So they're they've got to be the most beautiful and so you have to out, it's almost like Survivor. You have to out, like outlast. Out, 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 what is it? What is it? Out think, outlast, out. Yeah. It's like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you've gotta, you gotta be in it for the long haul. Like, you know, this, this isn't a, a business, you know, like that you, that can be kind of a side hobby. No. You know, it's, it's something you really have to like jump into the pool and you have to like swim in that pool for up to maybe 10 years. So there aren't, there aren't any shortcuts. You know, because it's even the stuff like when I wrote that letter to Bob Shea, I wasn't I didn't have any grand plan about, oh, this is going to lead to this and this and this in the future. I was just like, I have a story I want to tell. And I want this. He he owns the he, do, he does the Freddy movies and I want him to read it. You know, like that was my only goal because I had a story to tell that I wanted somebody to read. So um, I could never have planned that. Oh, he's going to kind of take me under his wing and then I'm going to get it. Yeah, I could. I, you know. I never planned any of that stuff. Um, so, so I found that what people call like luck has, has often been years of me working really hard over here and it not paying off like I thought it would, but then somebody else 
on this side of the room, you know, this side of town reads a script and they're like, oh, let's call Jeffrey. And, you know, so there's been a lot of that. So all the work that you put out there will benefit you somehow, but you just don't always know how it's going to be. So you can't expect like a shortcut, like somebody at a convention is going to, you know, have their agent sign you and then all of a sudden you're going to sell your script and then that's it. You know, it's just, it, it's no, it, there is no shortcut. I completely agree with you. And, and I, I, we both got shrapnel, lots of it in our <laughs> business, lots of shrapnel, lots of wounds, yeah. lots of wounds. And when you say put work out there, you know, when I, I, with this podcast, I've been, you know, that's why a lot of podcasts fail is because they just like, I'm going to do 20. I'm just going to keep do like after 20, they're like, well, no one's listening. I'm not making any money. I got to go. And it's the, I've outlasted yeah. almost all of my contemporaries. And by putting out these episodes, it's amazing who listens to this stuff. Yes. And all of a sudden I get a phone call or I get an email going, hey, I listened to this one obscure episode and um, this guy who directed some of the biggest movies ever wants to be on your show because it'd be a good fit for what he's doing right now. I'm like, I'm like what? Like, how is that? But that's the thing. It's it's putting work out there without any attachment to the outcome, I think is yes. I think the biggest piece of advice. Absolutely. 